In the previous section, we learned about using ampersand to bind functions in our scope. We learned about using controller as syntax in our directives. And we learned about transclusion and just how easy it was to use. Now we'll put the pedal to the metal and we'll learn about link versus controller inside our directives. Functions make our directives extra powerful. We'll inject dependencies into our directives. We'll draw our racetrack using the HTML canvas. We'll coordinate our directives, making multiple directives work together, and we'll add our cars to the track. In this video, we'll learn about link versus controller in our directives. We'll learn the various functions provided during a directive's lifecycle. We'll see how the functions are invoked as directives get compiled and run. And we'll concentrate on the two most used functions, controller and the post link function. In the past, you've seen me make use of functions within some of my demonstrations because I couldn't achieve everything I wanted to achieve with just the scope and the template. So let me show you a setup that we're going to use to explore this in some more detail. All I've done is create a simple directive called demo, and I've nested two of them inside each other, one with the label outer, the other one with the label inner. And this is how it's appearing in the HTML. Let's actually add some functions in here, and let's start with one you've seen me use on multiple occasions, and that's link. Now this is more sophisticated than the version of link you saw me use previously, because it's an object hash in this case. And the object hash has both a pre-link and a post-link function. Let's save this, and as soon as we save it, what we'll see over here in the con console is how these are called in order. The pre-links get called outside to inside. The post-link functions get called inside to outside. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see that in context with if there was a controller here as well. All right, now we've got both. And let's see how everything reacts if I have this. Okay, now I've got the outer controller being called prior to the pre-link, inner controller prior to the inner pre-link, and again, post links are called from the inside out. One thing that I've glossed over, and you're just going to probably have to put it aside in your memory, but still kind of hang on to it, is that there is a compile function as well. The compile function, if provided, has access to, for example, the template prior to its ever being used. That's handy, especially if you're doing something like ng-repeat, for example. But if you're not building that kind of directive, you may not use it in your first dozen directives. You may not use it in your first hundred directives. So it's really more of an advanced technique that's probably well outside of what we're going to deal with in rapid AngularJS directives. So be aware that it exists, but this set of calls that are used during the uh, life cycle of our directive, in fact, represent most of what most people use. In fact, I'll go one further and say that if we get rid of the pre-link function, like so, that these two functions actually represent 80% of what you'll ever need, maybe even more than that percentage-wise, during your directive writing. Next up, injecting dependencies into our directives. 